back in the day, if you had any flaws like skin tags, moles, or weird birthmarks, then you would have to hide them. Those markings were believed to be indicators of a witch who gained the mark after making a pact with the devil. Today, we are counting down the top five haunted individuals with witches' marks, and this is part two. So if you haven't seen part one already, then check that out. And now, let's get on with the video. Starting off this countdown, we have Alice Goodridge. In 1597, Alice Goodridge was tried after it was discovered she had two small bloody holes on her stomach. It looked like she had cut the witch's mark out of her skin. They were described as great warts that appeared to have been sucked. They believed that the devil would create these marks on their body after sucking the witch's blood from them as a form of nourishment. Not only that, but Alice apparently had a mark behind her arm and a number of other marks towards the top of her shoulder. But Alice claimed that the wound on her stomach happened after she accidentally stabbed herself. So the officials got a doctor to look at her stomach wound to see if it was the witch's mark or an accidental stab wound. Well, the doctor said, and I quote, was like to ha been so a long time, for it was not festered and seemed to be sucking. AKA, it was not a new wound like she claimed it was, and it appeared as if someone was sucking on the wound. AKA, the devil or demons. So poor Alice was tried as a witch. Now how was she accused in the first place? Well according to some articles I read from the archives, a young boy named Thomas Darling came forward claiming that he had been bewitched by Alice. How darling, get it? He became super ill and would have weird fits. Also according to the boy, Alice sent her familiar Minnie to torment him. So that's why Alice was questioned and strip searched for a witch's mark. When they found several all over her body, she she was killed. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. Moving on to number four, we have Isabel Adam. In 1707, during the witchcraft trials in Scotland, a woman named Isabel Adams confessed that the devil had given her a mark. She claimed that in the fall, she encountered a man with a hat wearing all black clothes. She engaged with the man and it turned out he was the devil and ended up kissing her. He then told her that in his service, she could be as rich as she wanted to. So she decided to re Announce her baptism and make a pact with the devil. Upon doing so, that's when she received the witch's mark or devil's mark. And surprisingly, after confessing this all, she wasn't even killed. She was actually freed, she just had to pay a fine. Moving on to number three, we have Elizabeth Jackson. The trial of Elizabeth Jackson was a pretty complex one. It seemed as if she was just an innocent woman whose neighbors wanted to get rid of her. So they created this elaborate story that she was a witch. So this took place in the mid 1600s. Elizabeth Jackson, or Elizabeth Howe was accused of bewitching a 14 year old girl named Mary Glover. At her trial, a woman named Elizabeth Burgess came forward being like, yeah, I witnessed her bewitch this poor young girl. Then she also claimed that she was visited by Jackson herself. During the visit, she was eating prunes when she wasn't able to swallow them and then she threw up. So she believed that this was the result of Jackson putting a spell on her. She then went on saying that every time Jackson visited her, bad things would happen. One time she even claimed that Jackson put a spell on her. She said, and I quote, that she might cast up her heart, guts and all, adding, thou shortly shall have in thee an evil spirit too. The following night, Burgess claimed she was visited by a vision in the shape of a fox. The night after, she had a vision of like a scary shadow man. The third night, she was visited by another vision, just like Jackson promised in her curse. Then another child, Hannah Trumbull, started having weird fits and became ill. She claimed it felt like she was being pricked by pins and said it was the work of Elizabeth Jackson. A priest was eventually called to help Hannah and while he was there, Hannah screamed out saying that Elizabeth was in the same room as them too and that she was going in and out of the oven. No clue what that means, but everyone was like, so she's guilty, she's a witch. So there was a lot of evidence built up against Elizabeth. During her trial, she was searched and they apparently found marks all over her body. An article said, and I quote, under the hands of the woman, marks were found in diverse places of her body. These marks were determined to be unlikely to grow of any disease, but rather more like the marks which are described to be in witches' bodies. On July 19th, 1692, she was executed by hanging. Dude, old English is messed up. And our second spot today 
today we have Marie Lemon. In 1662, Marie Lemon was tried and confessed to being a witch. So this all went down during the reign of Charles II, just after the whole big witch craze that happened in the UK. Now her case was unusual for one main reason. She was only 13 years old. But apparently she renounced her Christian faith and then got baptized by the devil. She even went on to confess to having intimate relations with the devil on multiple occasions. Apparently her and a number of other witches would meet up at night and would mingle with the devil. The devil would appear to them as a shape of a dark man with hooved feet. Other times he would appear as a brown dog. The group would then throw stones into the sea with the intention of hitting and sinking ships, all at the command of the devil. At her trial in 1662, she was accused of shape-shifting into a cat and using her magic to steal milk. This included placing a mug under the cow's udders and saying, in God's name, God send us milk. God send it and lots of it. And apparently it worked. I don't know. Furthermore, when she was searched at her trial, they found a mark on the right side of her body. Marie claims that this was from the devil nipping at her. Due to all the evidence stacked up against her, she was found guilty and burned at the stake. And in our number one spot today, we have Annabelle Stewart. Annabelle Stewart was tried in 1678 Scotland after being accused of being a witch. But they didn't have much against her. Apparently, she was taught witchcraft by a local beggar, Catherine McTarget. Now, they thought she was a witch because she was a beggar and was greedy. When people would give her money, she would demand more. If people didn't give her money, she would threaten them and tell them that bad things were coming their way. Plus, when people did call her a witch, she never denied it. She just kind of went with the flow. So people thought she was one. Now, back to Annabelle. So they thought that Catherine was her teacher of witchcraft and then she was imprisoned. During her trial, it was revealed that she had a mark on her arm. She confessed that she received that mark from the devil. She was found guilty and she was going to be executed, but she was underage. So instead, they decided to fix her instead of kill her. They moved her to Glasgow and was looked after by ministers. There, she would pray with them daily and follow their spiritual practices. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below if you were alive back in the day, would you be executed for being a witch? Because if you have like a birthmark anywhere, basically you are. Do you have any birthmarks? It's kind of a weird question, but let me know in the comments below. I don't know. And now, speaking of comments, let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top five haunted people with a witch's mark, and this is part one, obviously. Luna Loud commented, you make such great content. You deserve a hundred million subs by now. This is one of the best channels I've ever seen. Uh, thank you. Can you imagine 100 million subscribers? Do people even have that? Oh, I think, what's that, what's that channel name that makes the baby shark do 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 do? I think they make a crap ton of money, but I think they're up there as one of the highest earners and same with like PewDiePie. But thank you. You know another good channel that you should check out? Peach, starring me. Thanks. Joy Fred commented, do a list revolving around the witching hour. Okay, Joy, glad you say this because for the past couple of nights I've been making, waking up at the witching hour. I'm like, bro, am I haunted? Is there someone in my room? What's going on here? I'm a little freaked out, not gonna lie. Black Magic commented, Sabrina the Teenage Witch needs to grow up and you need to play her, Lindsay. I would love to play her. Uh, we got the chilling adventures of Sabrina, obviously, but like we can do a reboot of like Melissa Joan Hart's the comedy Sabrina the Teenage Witch, for sure. But I, I wouldn't do her any justice. Like, she is Sabrina. Anyway. James Emberton commented, Lindsay, I will never tell. For some reason, all most of the comments on there were like, Lindsay's a witch, Lindsay's a witch. So I think he's like, tell me if you're a witch, I'll never tell. <laughs> Joke's on you. <laughs> Jasper Quinzel Black commented, I have a mark on my right knee. It's the shape of a heart. Don't know if that makes me a witch. That just makes you cool. That's cool, like in the shape of a heart. Aww, Jasper, that's really cute. I like that. All right guys, that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Top 5 for more spooky videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see ya. Stay spooky.